So good morning, everyone. You're all very welcome to the Young People, Children and Education YPCE Project Award Information Clinic. So just looking ahead, the closing date is fast approaching. It will be on Thursday, the 16th of November, 2023. A little look ahead to the running order this morning. So you're all very, very welcome. Falcha, quick gachtene. Um, we have we will have an introduction to the Arts Council and we have a beautiful video to show you as well, which really showcases the, the work of the Arts Council and in particular in context of YPCE and what we wish to do. We, we are very lucky this morning, we will be joined by two groups um, that will speak a little bit later on and share their experience um, of the award and have some tips and advice for you. We will have a look at the YPCE Project Award at the Purpose and Priorities. We will look at making an application. And then, as I said earlier on, there will be time later on to go through some questions and answers. So Shona, I might invite you in. Steve Gachtene. Um, so yeah, as Yuma mentioned, we're just going to start with a quick overview of the Arts Council, the work that we do, and particularly in the area of children and young people's arts. Um, I have a couple of slides here, but actually Yuma mentioned the video that we have. So I think we might actually just start off with the video um, and that'll give you, that'll cover most of it for you. And then I'll just fill in a couple of blanks. Thanks, Jonah. The Arts Council is the national agency for developing the arts in Ireland. It's me and some Corla Aline, na Halin and Erin at Herbert. We want to make sure children can make, share, and enjoy all kinds of art. The arts include dausa, kyo, skelta, poetry, film, painting, putting on plays, going to shows, making and building a dara, a crossing, and much more. Children have the right to participate in cultural life and the arts. This is part of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Planning and providing for children and young people is part of the Arts Council's 10-year strategy. Who make art by, with and for children and young people. The Arts Council also works in partnership with government departments, local authorities and others who can help children take part in the arts. The Arts Council invests in research to learn about children's participation in the arts. They encourage children and young people to share their ideas. Find out how you can get involved at artscouncil.ie. I'm going to leave that up there for a minute because you can see that all of the the video that was featured in there are different projects that were funded by the by the Arts Council. And um, so, as you saw there, our commitment to plan and provide for children and young people is a priority within our ten year strategy, and it's one of a number of cross cutting policy areas, and um, which also includes our commitment to equality, diversity, and inclusion, our approach to planning for the arts across every part of Ireland, and our policy to promote fair pay for artists. Um, so just next slide there, please. I'm pulling back a little bit from our current strategy. Um, the Arts Council has a legislative remit to promote knowledge, appreciation and practice of the arts, to assist in improving standards and to advise government and public bodies in relation to the arts. Um, so the Arts Act 2003, I've, I've pulled out there, is the most recent piece of legislation in relation to the arts. Um, and it gives a very open definition of what we mean by the arts. Any creative or interpretative expression, whether traditional or contemporary, in whatever form. And then the Arts Act lists a number of specific art forms, but really it's a very open, open minded definition. And just next slide there. Um, and then pulling back um, a little bit further again from our national context into the international context is the human right really to take part in the arts. And as we know, and as we heard there in the video, uh, children's right to take part in the arts is spelled out in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. And this right to the arts forms part of an interconnected suite of rights closely linked uh, with the right to play, but also the right for children to express themselves freely in the medium of their choice and to an education that enables them to develop their full potential. 
Um, so in particular, the convention also underlines the principles governing all of children's rights. Um, and so we're really talking about, when we're talking about children's rights, we mean all children without discrimination. Um, the best interests of the child are always um, what's front of mind. Um, and we're talking about their survival, but equally their development. Um, and that their views need to be heard and taken into account in all matters affecting them, including their views about the arts. So later when we get into the detail of the, the project award, you'll see we have a youth voice template and different supports there to help you to think about how you're involving young people's voices in, in your projects, for example. And the next slide there, please. So really there's a range of ways in which the Arts Council goes about its work. And um, the main ways we seek to have an impact are through our investments or our funding um, and also through partnerships, really partnerships with anyone who can help to make sure that children have the opportunity to engage with the arts. Um, and we're hoping that our, our funding in, in itself will also inspire different groups to partner with artists or arts organizations to develop proposals that can impact on children and young people in a really transformative way. So we're really grateful to you all coming today and thinking about um, what some of these projects might be. Um, so next slide there, please. So we're here today to talk about the Young People, Children and Education Project Award. Um, it's one of several funding programs that we offer to support children and young people's participation in the arts. I put a few of them up there on the slide there. We've just recently made commitments of just over 2 million in the area of arts grant funding for 2024. Uh, strategic funding decisions will be made before the end of this year. The project award, as Emer mentioned, um, has a deadline on the 16th of November, and then the decisions will be made by the first quarter of next year. So that's why, as you hear, um, the award is for projects beginning after the 1st of March, because we won't know the decisions until shortly before then. And our website has the full range of funding opportunities on there. Um, so, for example, there's a few others listed there in sort of chronicle order, chronological order as they come up. If you're an individual artist or a practitioner making work with or for children and young people, you might be interested in applying for an agility award or a bursary, which provides you with time and space to develop your practice. And um, so the next round should have a closing date, I think, in January. Um, and for those of you who work with young people between the ages of 10 and 24, the Young Ensemble Scheme will be coming up again in the new year also. Um, and like the Project Award, it really places emphasis on young people's voice. Um, so if you feel you have a great idea, but you actually need more time and the Project Award is too soon for you, um, the Young Ensemble Scheme will be opening up for those working with that age group and you can apply for up to 25,000 through that award. Um, but the best thing really to do is to go to our website, sign up for the Arts Council newsletter so you can learn about the different awards that are out there because there's really quite a lot of them and they're all quite detailed. Um, but today we're going to talk about the Project Award. Um, so just next slide there, please. Um, if you go onto the Arts Council website, you'll see there's actually an, the, the deadline is the same for um, across all of the different art forms. There's a number of different project awards you can apply for. You can apply for a music project for, award, for example, or theatre project award. Um, and all of those are, are open um, to people who are also working with young people. Um, uh, the key thing is really to look at, they all have very different specific criteria and objectives and priorities. So you really should look at them and go, what is it that you're trying to do um, and which award is most relevant for you? Um, so the Young People, Children and Education Award, this is one we, we introduced it in um, the latter part of 2020 um, when we received additional funding from government, which luckily has been sustained and continued to grow since then. Um, and we introduced this award to really try and do something different. It, uh, it focuses, rather than focusing on the art form, it focuses on the young people and the ages and stages of children and young people's lives. Um, and we're encouraging people to work in projects that can be interdisciplinary or they can be in a single art form. Um, but they're really focusing on where are the children and young people at at this stage and what, what kind of difference is the project gonna make to their lives. Um, so you can apply for up to 80,000 you can also apply for less than that. It depends on the scale of what you have in mind. Um, and it's important that your budget sort of makes sense for what it is you're planning to do. Um, and the award is simply to support artists to develop and deliver ambitious and original projects with and for children and young people. And you'll see there it's divided into four strands, each broadly with a focus on the different ages and stages of children and young people's lives. Um, the first one, early childhood, then as children get a little bit older, strand two, transitions, um, is strand three and connections um, is a um, 
uh, really looking at connecting young artists and recent graduates who are 18 plus um, and connecting those with the established arts organizations and arts infrastructure in Ireland. Um, so depending on where you're at in your practice um, and which groups of young people you're working with, um, you're gonna have to choose the strand that is just most, uh, most relevant for your work. Um, so later on, Emer is going to go into a bit more detail on how all of uh, how to how to make an application, what all of the different criteria are. But before that, we want to kind of inspire you, give you a, a flavour of some of the projects that have been supported through this this award. And um, so I'm delighted that we're joined by Joyce Jackson, who's going to talk about Couple Curra Horse, which is a gorgeous project funded through Strand 2 in 2021. And after Joyce, we're joined by Alana Dunford, who's gonna talk about Drop Everything, which was supported through Strand 3 of the award in 2023, a project that took place in this year uh, with transition year students. Um, so I think I'll invite uh, Joyce on next, if she wants to take the stage and tell us a little bit about their project. For Thanks, Shona. Um, Couple Car Horse took place uh, in December 2021 um, and cherry, in Cherry Orchard at the Equine Centre there, which mm -hmm. might seem like a really strange place to have uh, an arts event. But as you can see, um, we had a, a horse show as part of the whole uh, event. But the two lead artists on it were Lux, landscape theatre makers, and Colin Keegan, the uh, spoken word poet. I have to confess, before I made contact with Lux, I had no idea what a landscape theatre maker um, was. Cherry Orchard is located in Dublin West, near Valley Fermat. It has a population of about 9,000, high levels of poverty, drug use, associated creative criminality, suicide, mental health, health issues, and low numbers progressing from second level to third level. But it has really connected community organisations and a great sense of community pride. So the aims were to encourage even further community integration by building a project around an interest shared by the uh, travellers and the settled communities, which is horses, and obviously they have an equine centre that speaks to that right in the heart of the community. It was to make the arts accessible in an area where many people don't feel that the arts are for them. And it was to bring professional artists like Lux and like Colin Keegan to Cherry Orchard to work with children and young people and show how work of real quality can be created and shared because sometimes I think uh, in, in communities, they, they don't feel that they can be ambitious or they don't feel that they that this is uh, this is for them that they can do this and the artists are there to kind of challenge them in a really supportive way to to create uh, work that that they can be proud of that everybody can be proud of. We applied to the the YPC project award because we wanted to focus on children in the local primary school, young people aged ten to twelve living at Laverick Park Traveller site, and the young people attending the integrated youth service at the Equine Centre. And then, as so often happens with projects like this, it expanded to include young people living in direct provision um, because they were working with Dublin Circus Project and we were working with Dublin Circus Project. And then we got involved uh, with 18 men who were taking part in the Wheatfield Prison Arts Education Scheme. So the, the uh, slide on your screen there is a beautiful shadow puppet movie that they made um, which was just really gorgeous about their experience of horses. Obviously, they're allowed no pets behind those walls. And you can actually see the prison wall in the background there, which Lux used to um, to project uh, uh, lasers and um, all kinds of other light show uh, on, on that. And they, between the, um, they had two Romani or traveler caravans there, which is a nod to the traveler um, engagement and involvement in this project. I think it was a hugely risky project. And I think the, the YPC team to a really leap of faith with Couple because it had a live horse show, it had children and it had fireworks. And I remember talking to the risk assessment guy at the beginning and he was a tad concerned. And the prison was concerned about inmates escaping over the wall if we used a crane for the light sculpture. And the drone footage had to be negotiated as they were afraid we'd be taking footage for future escapes or drug deliveries. And in the end, over 100 children and young people were involved in nearly 130 workshops across visual arts, spoken word, filmmaking and music. All the work generated in the workshops was fed up to Lux um, uh, so they could include it uh, and the show design could be inspired by it. Uh, actually, that's not 100 true because the children in St. Dalton's um, flat out refused to do any videos or make any films about horses because several of them had horses at home and they were just so bored of them. So they instead made movies about zombies and bullying and a talent show. But they were all 
um, really uh, uh, creative and fun. Um, the Arts Council's faith in the Copper project has uh, been um, has paid off, and Copper has been transformative for the Cherry Orchard area in so many ways, both at a community level and at an individual um, level. It's gone a long way to creating cultural confidence in the area. People now know that they can be part of an experience like Copper, not just as consumers or audience members, but as creators. Um, the filmmaking strand allows the facilitators to model careers to the children who might never thought of media or art as a potential job. That was the huge feedback from the principal and the teachers. Um, we were keen to, be, or as continue to be keen, to build a stronger relationship with Valley Farmer College of Further Education and keep young people in college. So this was actually an eye opener for many of them that they could go on to study things like filmmaking, media, animation, game making at BCFE, which is literally two bus stops down the road from Cherry Orchard or within walking distance. So it's a softer way to stay in third level and remain in education for many of these children who look at third level as somewhere where you go to do something maths related, which can be kind of slightly uh, scary or, or, or more academic. Um, there are already really strong community networks in the Kerry Orchard area. I remember Shona saying that at the show on the night that there was a huge sense of community at it. But Koppel allowed groups to come together in different and um, really positive ways, and it sparked an appetite for more collaboration in the community. Um, you, incredibly, I, I, I think I was, um, I mean, Colin Keegan is a hugely inspirational guy when he goes in to do workshops, but I was kind of slightly concerned how the children would react and they still talk with such huge um, positivity uh, and affection for him and for the workshops that he did. They found a voice through him and they, they really loved the work that he did with him. And when he assembled all that into his poem and delivered some of that at the start of the show, uh, the children, the adults, everybody else, I've never heard um, a performance like that listened to with, with such respect because there was a huge curiosity and a huge willingness to engage with what he has been doing with um with the children um the equine center uh, also used to be a place where drug dealers snuck in at the back to throw their merchandise over the prison wall and as a result of collaborating on the um the copper project there's now a much more productive and positive relationship developing with weekly prison uh, we got project funding and um, our central project funding uh to work on a mural project with local residents and the lads in Wheatfield and young people. And that project is nearing completion. And the feedback from the lads in Wheatfield and their families, they, because we've installed some of those mural panels um, at the visitor centre and some of them will be going up in prison itself, have been incredibly positive. It's given them a connection with the, with the outside world, which is what we had intended. That mural is not static, printed on aluminium panels, which allow it to be displayed, not just at the Equine Centre, but at the local school, the Resource Centre and Irish Rail are collaborating with the Equine Centre to install the panels at Park West Cherry Orchard Station. So this Arts Council funded project is helping to change the narrative about the area of commuters going in and out of the Park West area. Uh, also off the back of Copper Fur, we secured YES funding, uh, Young Ensemble funding, to make a short movie about the drugs problem in the area. And we're in discussions with the Garda uh, Diversion Project in West Dublin now to use that film as a tool for their um, drug programs uh, among, in youth services and in schools. So a huge amount has um, of really positive uh, developments have come out of the Copper Curra uh, experience. I think um, mostly what it's done is shown people how they can work with professional artists. And again, I would be, um, it, it is about empowering, supporting um, and challenging in a really gentle way the, the notion of what um, people uh, can create when they are um, when they're when they're given the opportunity to work with with professional artists um, in a really collaborative way. The only advice I'd give um, is to do your risk assessment from the start, <laughs> so you know what conditions you're going to be working under and what the event plan is. Um, we knew roughly from the very start of you know all of the elements but things did expand like the the prison and that presented um a real kind of security issues uh, for us which we were able to um uh, surmount and um, covid uh, was the show was held in december so it was uh, we were just coming out of covid i think and it really impacted on the numbers who could attend the show um uh, so I we, we had a plan b where the project could have been broken down into smaller um, pods 
uh, fortunately we didn't have to uh, to do that but we did have to restrict numbers and were very um, uh, strict about people being vaccinated before they got in uh, to the F1 Centre um, campus for the show. Um, but again, if you're doing anything to scale, the thing is to have a plan B and to know then that that plan B will probably walk into a plan C as well. Um, the third one, I suppose, would be to trust the artists. I mean, if you're the artists just, you know, totally delivered with them, um, with uh, with Kapil Kura uh, and just created a uh, a really a real spectacle, but also with Colin's poem, he rooted it in everything in the community. And um, when I was listening to it, I heard lines that I had heard developed in the workshops in direct provision um, in Labrie Park. That's a, a, a shot there of Colin with the lads up at Labrie Park at the canal up there. Um, and so we held our workshops down there. We held our workshops in the direct provision hotel up in Kildalkin, in the equine centre down at the school. We went out to where everybody was and then we pulled them all together um, for the show. But that was because these artists and Colin is hugely experienced and Lux uh, have also done a lot of work in, in um, them with, with, with young people and they're just really up for the uh, challenge. And finally, watch the budget because particularly towards the end of our project, bills were flying in, people were being paid. We did the budget every day and had a look at the little things like T-shirts for um, security volunteers, overnight security for the lux, lux props so they didn't get nicked before we did the show, pizzas to keep people fed while they were setting up and then de-rigging. It all melts up and you may not have included that in your in your budget and then suddenly you're left with a, a hole or you know trying to you know dig it out of somebody else's pocket. So just to be um, to be really, you know, really keep an eye on the budget and just make sure that you're covered to produce this and for any kind of unforeseen uh, events. And finally, one other thing, YPCE funded uh, a project in Adamstown um, called The Big Tree, where uh, it's, a, it's a very new area in West Dublin, very diverse and extraordinarily diverse uh, and still under construction. But out of that project, um, we have developed a uh, young people's arts organization. So we're currently uh, engaging with them. They're making a film at the moment. And um, we've got YES funding. The adults in the area have formed a big tree committee to lobby for more facilities and um, amenities for young people and for themselves. Irish Rail got involved and they're now currently working with the school and they exhibited all of the material that was developed during the Big Tree project. But now they're also offering things like um, transition year work experience and um, and RTE also came down and did a piece on it for This Is Art. But that YPCE programme has been hugely transformative for Adamstown. All of these projects can be, and it is only because the Arts Council takes a flyer on them. So um, I, I'm just uh, uh, hugely grateful, and, and the communities that are being impacted by them uh, are too. Joyce, thank you so much. Um, it was a real pleasure to actually get to see um, to see, to experience Couple Curra Horse first person. And uh, I'm so happy that you've come, uh, joined us today to share that project more widely. I'm sure you've all found that very inspiring. Um, and one that I didn't get to visit directly, but I've been looking at the images and I can't wait to hear more about um, is Drop Everything. Um, and we have Alana Dunford, who's gonna join us now and is going to talk about their project award. And at the end of this, we'll have a chance for Q and A for those of you who are with us here in, in the room. Um, but for now, I'm gonna pass it over to to Alana to tell us about her project. Thanks so much. Um, hi everyone. So I'm gonna just talk a bit about Do Anything, which is a creative career education program uh, run by the arts organization Drop Everything, and it's based on Inishir. Um, So a little bit about how it was set up in 2018, Drop Everything launched a creative education program called Do Anything on Inishir's uh, in the secondary school, Kalashta Gopland. Um, and the aim of it was to all to show young people different job opportunities within creative industries. So by tapping into Drop Everything's network of creative professionals, students got to see firsthand insights and advice on how to approach working in the creative industry. And it kind of showed just how creativity spans across multi industries. So from makeup artistry to maths, to photography, to entrepreneurships how to build communities through food or theatre, start a fashion label or produce films. Um, so next slide there. Um, so um, we received the YPC Project Award Strand 3 in 2023, and we came up with a plan to kind of incorporate build component into um, the Do Anything programme. 
Um, so we came up with a project that kind of had two elements. So firstly, it was uh, a three month design and construction project for the transition year students. So they worked with different artists and builders to create a temporary sp social space for themselves and their school. Um, and then the second element of the project was once they created the space um, and built the space, um, they would program the space with arts programming and uh, with the help of different artists and creatives that came to the island. Um, and then they, alongside this was the week long creative career guidance program. Um, so the build element, so between February and May, they completed a design and construction project. So they looked at both traditional crafts on the island and contemporary designs. And they had different artists and builders um, come out and give workshops as well. Um, but so the project was led by Forerunner, which is an art and architect collective. Um, and then they had different kind of um, designers and stuff coming out to give smaller workshops. So Jordan Ralph was one of them. Um, the crew from Common Knowledge, Material Matters was another. Um, and so it kind of, it took the form in um, kind of once or twice a month workshops from February to May. And then in between, we'd have Zoom classes with them. Um, so they kind of went through all the stages. So they kind of started off with sketching and thinking about materials. And then they would kind of decide upon the materials, decide, decide upon a design. And then in May, they had a week where they had their build week. And then the second week, they did the programming of the space and kind of through this performance um, on the last day for their school and their community. Um, so next slide there. So this was the finished um, design and building that they came up with. This was their very own pavilion space for their school and for their community. Um, you can, um, yeah, but just one thing to say about the design was they just, it was amazing because so much of the design was just, they had so much input and direction into the final design and the build of it and through their sketches and through their just like input and ideas it was really amazing to see that this design was really their own um so next slide there please Emer. um so then the second part of it the the programming of the space we had a, a huge array of artists come to the island to give them different uh master classes so they had classes with musicians such as circa richardson and morgan mcintyre from saint sister they had theater makers and producers such as craig flaherty from the Abbey Theatre and James Reardon from the Brew Theatre come out and give them um, workshops. They had lighting designers such as Kev Freeney, photographers, writers, artists, um, a huge, a huge kind of mix of um, workshops. And this kind of concluded with the final kind of performance um, on the Friday of that week. Um, I can go to the next one there. So, um, yeah, and it was just, it was brilliant. The students just thrived and just were so involved with in every aspect. Um, and it was just, especially for me, it was just incredible to see, I was there with them from kind of the very beginning when they were quite, you know, shy and they wouldn't ask much, much questions. And to see them by the end of the program, just so engaged and so full of ideas and full of just such passion for it. It was just so amazing to see um, and just they were working after school on it. They were coming up with all these mad ideas and, you know, for the final performance, they were directing people around the stage. It was just it was really um, amazing to see. We go to the next one there. Um, so this was just some of like the this was the site before we had built. And this was during the build week when they were kind of getting ready. We go to the next slide there. And then this was during the build. So we had, as I said, Common Knowledge came out and did workshop. We also had a site visit to the Common Knowledge headquarters, which they really enjoyed. So they were kind of getting ideas through that. Um, you can go to the next one. And then, yeah, this is the final one again. And then, sorry, next one again. Um, so kind of some of the outcomes that um, I'd like to highlight was kind of the high student engagement involvement with BUILD. Um, as I said, like, well, principal and teachers came up to me um, afterwards and said, you know, there were students that usually wouldn't speak in class or that were quite, you know, not engaged in regular classes that were just thriving during it and that were performing on stage and just like taking 
a lot of um, the work um, really seriously when they were involved in the project. Um, and it just kind of shows that when given kind of the right space like that and kind of nurtured in the right way in a creative space that you can really just thrive. Um, and then another outcome I'd say was, um, it was, there was a lot of individual attention kind of given to the students by the artists and creators working with them. Um, now that's like, it is a small, a small class group. There's about 12 students. So that does, you know, makes it extra special. Um, but they had kind of one-on-one -on -one almost learning with it. But um, even for the other students that were involved, they, um, the whole school could take part in um, some of the classes. Um, so, but it was really beautiful to see kind of how they kind of, you know, they, they gave space for the students to be really curious and ask lots of questions to the different um, artists, um, having that one-on-one -on -one time and just being able to kind of play around with different kind of creative mediums is really a special thing to be able to do. And a lot of them kind of found their kind of niches um, or like learned new skills that they might not have before doing that. And then another outcome would have been it was a new space for the community. So during the summer, the students got to like enjoy that space. So did the locals um, and it was really nice to have that. Um, and then you can go to the next one. Um, yeah, and that's just another uh, photo of the pavilion they created and the next one there, Emer, thank you. Um, and then, yeah, another thing that we found really important was like to keep the link between the artists and creatives and the students after the project was finished. Um, so one thing we did was um, we brought the students up to a, a, a studio to record a song that they um, had actually written with Circa Richardson while during the program. Um, so we brought them up to Dublin and they recorded their song and they loved it. They had such a good time. Um, but yeah, I just think it's a really important thing for like the students to know that they can reach out and ask for help and ask, you know, creatives and artists for advice um, and it's a nice thing for them to know as well but to continue on that learning outside of the project and to keep up those links um, and then yeah um, empowerment through like building is just like I think it's a really um, it's a really important like part, part like it in terms of the YPC project I think build is a really interesting one to do because they really learned so many skills through um, designing and building a space and it is super empowering like they had so much um, they and like the overall design of their pavilion space and it was the same when it came to the programming of the space the students were like the main directors and programmers and it was their show you know it was their the artists and creators were just there to help but it was really it was their their thing um, and I think that's such an empowering thing for them Um, yeah so that's um, next slide there. Thank you. Um, that's kind of it. Um, uh, in terms of tips, um, I more so this message I think is a really important message. Um, and it's one I just really believe in when you can give young people a space like that to kind of be creative and have a big say and a role in the direction of a project, and to just like let them you know have freedom. It can be really transforming and empowering for them. And especially, I think, with strand three, that kind of transitions you. Um, at that age, it's so important to have something like this. And, um, you know, transition year as a year, you can be kind of lost and unsure what you want to do. So having something like this was, I think, really amazing for them. Um, yeah, and I think that's it, really. One tip is I just we were really blessed with such a great team of creatives and artists. Um, so I think kind of to pick a good team of people is just really important because the team, the artists that we worked with, they really listened to the students and encouraged them and just gave them a lot of freedom kind of. So I think that's a really, a really good um, thing to be aware of. OK, thank you. That's all. Wow, thank you so much, Alana, for sharing um, about that project. I think really, really inspiring to hear about it. Um, and I know Umar is gonna uh, take over the reins now <clears throat> and bring you all through the process because there is a bit of paperwork to face in order to apply for one of these uh, project awards. Um, but um, we hope that you feel inspired by the kind of things that can happen um, once, once, um, once you do um, go for it and if you're successful in, in your funding application. So we want you to make a good application. So um, 
I'll hand over to Emer, who's going to bring you through some of the details that are in, in our guidelines to help you through. And at the end, as I say, we'll have questions and answers. And sorry, just to mention, um, we also have in the background Katie Fitzpatrick, who's the advisor with the Young People, Children and Education YPCE team. And uh, so she'll be able to answer um, any questions you have that you put in the chat, um, um, as well as us then um, having a Q&A at the end of this presentation. Thanks to Joyce and Alana there for wonderful presentations. So just looking ahead, we're going to now look at the purpose and priorities of the award. So the purpose of the YPCE Project Award is to support artists to develop and deliver ambitious and original projects with and for children and young people. And these can be interdisciplinary or very fo focused on a specific art form. You need to apply to one strand. Now, I will say um, a question we often get asked is what if, uh, you know, some of the, 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 the proposal doesn't strictly fit within one strand. And what we would say is to select the strand, the strand that's most closest that represents your overall proposal um, the clearest, I suppose. Um, so strand one, as just recapping again over this again, it's the Early Childhood Project Award, and that's for children um, from zero to six, so from birth right up to the age of six. Then moving on to strand two, uh, the Childhood Project Award, and that's kind of focusing on, on the ages of children between seven and 12. Moving on to strand three, the Transitions Project. So that's ambitious and original projects that enable children and young people at a key transition stage in their lives to engage in the arts. And then finally, strand four, that connections project that uh, engages and works with young emerging artists and recent graduates aged 18 plus to work with established arts organisations and arts infrastructure in Ireland. So just to say, to pick the strand that the closest fit to your proposal. So looking at the objectives and priorities, Continuing on from that, so we give strate strategic priority across all of the strands equally proposals that enable artists and arts workers from diverse communities to play a central role in the development and delivery of projects. Proposals that enable children and young people from diverse backgrounds to engage with exciting and dynamic artistic projects. Proposals that enable children and young people to have a voice in the development, delivery and evaluation of projects. Proposals that enable children and young people with a disability to engage in exciting, dynamic, artistic projects. And proposals that demonstrate that the individuals and partners involved have the capacity to deliver a high quality artistic project that will be relevant and engaging for the target age of the group. So who can apply? So the award is open to professional artists and organisations working to engage children and young people in the arts. And to be eligible, you must be a resident in the Republic of Ireland. Now, there are exceptions to that. Um, you, you can be deemed eligible, but you must contact us in, in advance to discuss that. That's relevant to you. We encourage applicants from all areas of the community, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, civil or family status, religion, age, disability, race or mem membership of the traveller community or socio-economic background. And you can see further information um, on this and I can share a link with you afterwards to the Arts Council Equality, Human Rights and Diversity Policy and Strategy. So who should not apply? So if you are an organisation in, in receipt of strategic funding, if you are an art centre funding recipient or partnership funding, while we do welcome you to get involved and be there as partners and offer support to proposals, you can't be the main applicant. Individuals who work on an ongoing basis with organisations funded through any of the above, above programmes, you, you can't apply either. Organisations or individuals that have already submitted an AGF 2023 application. So if you've submitted an application, you can't also apply to this. Individuals seeking support towards fees for higher education or study or who are in full time education during the period to which the award will be will be offered. Um, so that applies to applicant, not project participant. Just to be clear on that, you could be a participant in this, but just not the applicant. 
individuals or organizations who do not have a demonstrable track record as a professional artist. So you must be recognized by your peers as a professional artist or um, arts organization. Members of the Council of National Cultural Institutions directly funded by the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sports and Media cannot apply. You cannot apply for the award both as an individual and as part of an organisation, so you really will have to make a decision there if, if that applies to you. Um, you cannot apply as artistic director, let's say, of a company and then also separately in your own name. Um, just one one proposal there. Applications that do so um, will not be prioritised and may be deemed ineligible. So just a little recap on earlier on, you can apply to a maximum of €80,000. Your access costs, if you have, if your uh, proposal inclu includes um, arts workers with disabilities or artists with disabilities um, or the provision of that work specifically relating to the making of the work, um, if you have additional costs beyond that €80,000 or indeed whatever it is that you were applying for, um, that means you could apply for 80,000 plus an additional access cost, but we ask that you uh, you provide additional information clearly outlining that, uh, what these costs are for. You must submit a detailed budget and we have a template on our website, you'll see a little bit later on, on one of the slides. Um, and the maximum amount is the difference between the proposed expenditure and the proposed income you indicate in the budget. So supporting material, you are asked to provide an up-to-date CV and biographies for the key artists involved in your proposal, a detailed budget, letters and emails of any support or memorandums of understanding that you have with the, with the key collaborators, confirming their commitments and any commitments of income or um, income in kind that supports feasibility. Samples demonstrating previous work relevant to the proposed project, and you can submit a maximum of five there. In cases where the project proposal has a public outcome, a marketing and or dissemination and engagement plan is also required. And a plan that outlines the process through which children and young people have a voice um, in the development, delivery and evaluation of the project. So you can use, we have a YPCE youth voice template, which you can use um, as an option there to support that. If you don't support all of the required support material, you are in danger of becoming ineligible. So uh, just going uh, with the YPCE, we have our own set of support material that we ask. If for some reason you were, you were possibly looking at applying to theater or in, our, in another art form, just be aware that the support material will be different for that as well. So youth voice and supporting. Sorry, I skipped on a slide. So a strategic priority for Arts Council through this award is to support proposals that enable children and young people to have a voice in the development. So that, that's just really important. And that's where the youth voice template comes into play there because it, it supports and shows and demonstrates that, that the young people have, the youth voice plays a central role and point in the development delivery and the evaluation of projects. Um, as I said, you can opt to use the template that we have available on our website. Uh, the template asks you to consider how children and young people have the space, the voice, audience and influence in the decision making of your project. And the youth, the youth voice template allows you to explain if you do not have a plan to consult with young people at all stages of your project so that we can understand your rationale. So that's it, it really does support why or why not you might you might not have something included. And we would expect this to be relevant in very few of the cases. So I, I would urge you to to have a look at this template and um, with that in mind while developing your proposal and your application. So this is just a little look at our website on the Arts Council website. When you look at available funding, if you select the YPCE Project Award, this is the page that you will land on. And this is the page where we will embed this video when it's complete. So you have the guidelines there, you've got the youth voice template under supporting material, and you've also got the project award uh, budget. So this is uh, just a little a, a screenshot of what the youth voice template looks like and the kind of questions that it asks, but this template is to support and strengthen your proposal. 
So with the budget template, you list all project related costs, all costs, all the fees, all wages, all technical costs, all admin costs should be listed in your uh, related costs. And then you need to list all of your project income that you hope and expect to receive. That could be from other funders. That could be in-kind support. That could be box office uh, receipts, uh, program sales. Um, and do not forget in-kind support in both income and expenditure. So that's really important because it, it reflects the true overall um, value of your proposal. And also, as I said earlier, it does support the feasibility of the overall proposal. Um, so if there's any gap in information, that's not good. That's why you should include all of these. And you should refer also to the policy we shared on screen earlier on, paying the artist for fair and equitable pay. This is just a little look at the budget template for the for, for our particular award. As I said um, earlier, a little while earlier, uh, different um, art forms will have different budget templates. This is the one we have here for, for YPCE. Again, filling in all of your expenditure, all of your income, and don't forget in-kind support as well. And then just moving on to our child uh, protection policy self-audit. So if in the event that you are um, you are successful in receiving funding, you will go through a self-audit uh, uh, part before you can draw down your money. That is a separate thing that will uh, that you would receive um, on foot of an offer of funding. So the Arts Council require that all individuals and organisations providing services to children and young people under the age of 18 have suitable child protection policies and procedures in place. When making an application, you must indicate whether or not your proposal is relevant to the age group. Um, in for most cases, that will be yes. Um, and then, as I said, you would go through a self-audit um, on foot of receiving funding. You can see more information on tusla.ie and you can email any questions to safeguarding at artscouncil.ie. So the assessment process. So just moving on to the assessment process, I'll just leave those images there for a moment. So all of the proposals will be um, assessed against the following criteria, the artistic quality, meeting the objectives and priorities of the award and feasibility. So with artistic quality, the quality of the idea and the proposed arts activity, the track record of the proposed artistic person personnel. That's why it's really important that you include CVs and biographies for all of the people who are involved and that supporting material. So there's no gap in information. If, if you've said you hope to have somebody on board and um, it, without their involvement, it might undermine the entire feasibility. It's really important that you have copies of emails, letters of support, um, any uh, offers of uh, funding that you expect to receive, that that's all included here as well. The meeting, the objectives and priorities of the award, if you look under section 1.1 of the guidelines to uh, elaborate more on that, and then around feasibility, the assessment of feasibility considers the extent to which the applicant demonstrates capacity to deliver the proposed activity. So again, looking at sources of income, have you got confirmed partners? Do you have uh, letters of support agreement there, even in, in the early stages? And have you got a clear and feasible schedule in place? So once you make um, your your uh, application and you have submitted it along with the, uh, your application form and all of the support material, you will receive two emails. One is to acknowledge that you've submitted your, your application has been received and the other email that you will receive contains your application number and your application number is very important to, to keep because that will not change throughout the assessment process and that application number will be communicated to you on all uh, correspondence in relation to your application. So once it it's your uh, proposal application is received into us through our online services, it goes through an eligibility check. So initially, it's just a check from our colleagues to see, is there an application form? Are there support materials? When it comes to, to us as a team, then we go a little bit deeper. We have a closer look at all of the support material. We need to, we, we need to treat everybody and every proposal equally and fairly. 
and in a transparent way. So we see that uh, we have uh, completed application forms and that all of the support material that we ask is essential, is there and present and uh, can be accessed. Um, just to say there, if you are sharing a video and it needs a password or a document that needs a password, we won't be able to, to access that. That's really important. Please uh, pay attention to in the guidelines to what way you can share support material. That's really important. Um, it goes through the assessment process um, and then finally on to scoring. So uh, your application once deemed eligible will either be shortlisted or not shortlisted. All shortlisted applications go before a peer panel made up, made up of between three and five um, external panel members. Um, that also includes uh, some young people as well. They are the decision makers and uh, on the day your your proposal that is shortlisted is scored. Um, then a recommendation is made and the decision is communicated to applicants and the decision then is noted by council. So that decision made by the peer panel is the final decision. Um, following that, um, you can ask whether you're successful or not. Uh, you should ask for feedback and um, the assessment notes on your proposal. So time frame, so the length of time for from from what I mentioned there for when it's received into us, it can take anything up to 12 weeks, so about three months. So activities should not commence before the 1st of March 2024. And really, we don't always have um, a strict um, timeline on that because we don't know how many proposals we're going to receive. That really depends once we have the, the overall um, number, we can we work on it from there, but we say don't have any activities within your proposal, um, you know, that that you're significantly looking for funding for, um, if that makes sense. So all our applications are made online on our online services. So if you don't have an account, uh, you need to register on, go on to the Arts Council website and go on to online services and create uh, whether you are applying as an individual or whether you are applying as an organization. And just to say, if you are successful in receiving funding, the bank uh, name must match the name of the applicant. So if you're applying as an individual and the name is Mary Daly, then the bank must match that. And the same with an organization, you must be able to have a bank, um, bank account with that, with that same name available. So if you have any questions, just email ypce at artscouncil.ie. We recommend that you upload your application at least 48 hours before the advertised deadline. And that way, if you have any issues at all, we'll do our best to resolve those. And please do contact us before 2 p.m. on the day of the deadline if you are encountering any issues at all. Um, inquiries dealt after that are just a little bit harder to, to uh, resolve before the end of the working day. And online services will close at 5.30 on this Thursday, the 16th of November. It just switches off and switches down. And remember to download something can sometimes be quite quick, but to upload support material can take a while. And um, we'd often recommend that you maybe put all of your support material into one PDF. Um, and that's sometimes easier if you want to stick a little table of contents at the start of that as well. It just makes everything a lot clearer for you and for those who will read your application because a number of people will be involved in reading through your application. So just try and be as clear as possible and, and just that that will go a long way. So there, uh, there's a link there for frequently asked questions on our online services. If you go into the Arts Council website, you'll be able to access that. If you've got technical questions or issues, please email online services at artscouncil.ie. The main phone number is 01618020. There's also a YouTube on how to make an application that's on the Arts Council website page for uh, the YPC Project Award where the guidelines are. There's also a link to a YouTube on how to make an application form there as well. So common eligibility mistakes that sometimes arise is that somebody misses the deadline. They might have a different date in their head or they've looked at a different award and have, has, have that date in mind. They leave it too late, um, not uploading all of the support material or uploading the wrong support material. So, so good idea is to label your support material so it makes sense to you while you're uploading it and an incomplete application form. 
please just take your time, I guess, while you're uplo uploading your support material and your application form, because it's very, very easy to make a simple error, uh, but not as easy to fix. If for some reason you have forgotten something essential support material and you need to upload that before um, the closing date, you would have to resubmit an entire application. We can't accept any support material once the once you've submitted your application. Um, so just uh, the email address there at the top of the page uh, for the team here directly to YPCE, ypce at artscouncil.ie. We will soon be welcoming a new team member to uh, as YPCE assistant. So you'll all uh, see that on our website in the coming weeks um, and you'll receive correspondence as well from the team around this. Um, myself, uh, Emer Hart, YPCE officer. I can be got at emer.hart at artscouncil.ie. We've got Katie Larry on the team as YPCE support manager. Katie Fitzpatrick, who is also there in the background, I know keeping an eye on the chat and helping out with questions, is our YPCE advisor. Katie is supported by Bernadette Larkin, who is our YPCE support assessor, and then Shona Nivreen, head of YPCE. So, Captain Gwil Shingakrud, Gaurav Mila Mahigov Galair, thank you all very much. I am going to stop recording um, and then once I've done that, you will be able to join us on screen. Gurav Mila Maigov, Slan.